Let's start with foreign policy in Israel, what happened today and, and what's been happening the past week there. For me, it appears that something is very dangerously frivolous in President Obama's actions, that he is willing to risk the security of our closest ally in order to get back at, at one of his political enemies, Netanyahu. Yeah, look, that's something that has marked his entire, both of his terms, being dangerously frivolous. Great, great phrase. And you're looking in this case, of course, before with the Iran nuke deal, that was dangerous and frivolous because he wanted a legacy, ignoring everything that they're doing. In this case, it's fascinating because for him, in his mindset, I'm sure he thinks there's several wins. One, he clearly does not like Netanyahu personally, and so he's bashing him. He doesn't like Donald Trump personally, and you're looking at this makes not only uh, the beginning months of Donald Trump's tenure more difficult, makes the world a more, a more dangerous right. place. That is going to cost America more money. And then he can leave being the president of, of peace, and then suddenly a Republican has a world of war again. That he's almost setting the table for this kind of dangerous dynamic. It also keeps eyes off of Iran. That's true. And it, he doesn't and it have time to deal with Iran. Well, He's going to be dealing with the, the mess he's created. Yeah, Let me move exactly. on to Rachel, if I can. The Gitmo releases. Uh, I mean, ta again, these were the hardest of the hard in terms of those that, that remain in Gitmo. So to, to talk about releasing them at all seems to be dangerously frivolous, no? Oh. Absolutely, and he's been doing this quietly all along. He's been uh, letting these prisoners go to countries that do not have the security or the infrastructure to keep an eye on them. He let, he let a bomb maker go to Bosnia who um, uh, has no other employment, doesn't know how to do any other skills. Right. And, and in Bosnia, there's like an 80% unemployment or 50% unemployment rate. So um, he's been doing dangerous things all along. But what's interesting is before the election, he and Michelle Obama uh, spoke incessantly about a peaceful and civil transfer of power. And they have been anything but models of civility, yeah. starting with their, uh, with, when the uh, 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 Trumps went to the White House and they snubbed them and didn't allow them to take that picture. Right. They've although, done tacky although interviews Ford, on it Oprah, did appear, Axelrod. I, I understand, but Ford, it did appear at that at one meeting, the sit-down meeting between Trump and, and Obama, that they were getting along. Trump said later on, gee, the, I, I like the guy, we seem to have this relationship, but it really does seem that he's changing his tune dramatically. The EPA uh, ruling, the ruling on offshore drilling is another example of that. Well, for more than a year, the media talked about the size of Donald Trump's ego. It's clear right now that President Obama's ego may be twice as big. These are unprecedented actions, things that Bush 43 and Clinton would have never have done. Here's my concern going forward. These actions in their attempt to spite Trump could actually harm America in future presidential transitions. David, honestly, has anyone ever tried to create Middle East peace with 21 days to go in their presidency? Let's get real here. This is all about spiting and delegitimizing Donald Trump and possibly hurting America on the foreign stage. 